Hey, what's up? My name is Satan is a Chill Guy. You can call me Austin, Satan, Chill, whatever you prefer. And I'm a Haiti speedrunner. In this video today, I intend to show you all of the neat little things you can do with Meg in order to speed up many bosses and some boss fights. All right, first things first, we're gonna dive into things with a how aiming Meg works before we dive into how to use it on the mini bosses because I think knowing how to aim Meg is really important. So we have, oh God, we have Zagreus. There we go, beautiful. Looks just like him, I'm an artist. All right, we have Zagreus and we have our Meg summon circles that show up when you summon Meg. There's five of them. Oh. It's fine. And these go here. And you'll notice something about how they appear. I think, cool. So what ends up happening when you summon Meg is her middle circle and all of the other circles will show up perpendicular to Zagreus in the way that he is looking. So if here's the line where Zagreus is looking, it'll be perpendicular to that as a line across like this. Another way to think about it, and it's what helps me a bit more than perp perpendicular to how you're looking, is it'll come out parallel to Zag's shoulders. The circles will come out to the closest enemy uh, to you when you summon, or on top of Zag with the middle circle center centered on him if there's no enemies to summon on. It'll look like that. To start the video off, we're gonna be going over the mini bosses found in Tartarus. Now there are three potential mini bosses in Tartarus. You have Doomstone, Sneak, and the Twin Bombers. And we're gonna be going over them in order of, in my opinion, difficulty, starting with Doomstone. Do note that I am playing on Force Over Time 2 in this video. So the timing will be a little bit later for Force Over Time 1 and no Force Over Time. So using Meg on Doomstone is fairly straightforward. You just wanna dash directly on top of him and then hit the Meg button as he's spawning. Meg will appear on Zag, and since we're on top of where he's spawning, it'll hit Doomstone. So the timing for Sneak can be a little bit more tricky. He will spawn, then you'll hear a swoosh and he appears. He will then teleport and then reappear. It's after you see him teleport for the first time and then reappear that you want to hit the Meg button. So that way Meg will auto aim onto him and hit him. Do note that if you were a little late to get the Meg timing, then if you wait for another teleport cycle, so after he teleports the second time and then appears again, you can still hit him then. So the Twin Bombers is a very hard Meg to hit. I struggle with it frequently, and I'd say I'm only up to about 80% consistency with it, but I'll do my best to try to explain how it hits when I do get it to hit. So there's actually two different lineups for it, and that can complicate it, because mid-run you have to recognize which lineup you need to go for and then execute upon that. In this first one you'll notice with the room orientation that the door is going to be on our right. So. In order to hit the Meg, you dash forward into the middle of the room, near where the bombers are spawning, and your stick is going to end up, sort of up into the right a little bit, but for me what I try to visualize is putting my stick in the corner of the left hand pillar. If you summon Meg right after lining up just like this, both bombers should be hit by the attack and you should be able to clean up the room very quickly after that. And now for the second lineup for the Twin Bombers. If you'll notice, this time the door is to our left. So this is where the lineup can change as it's based on room orientation and how aiming Meg works relative to Zag, as well as movement within the room relative to the orientation. So for this time again, you're going to want to immediately dash twice into the middle of the room. And then your stick ends up up and just slightly to the left. For me, again, what I'm trying to visualize is putting my aiming my stick at the corner of the pillar that's facing us and that's like in the true north of the room assuming how we see the room's orientation is how it is um and this one can be a little risky if you're a little bit closer than i was then it'll 100 percent hit the bomber that's below zag but i did a fair bit of testing on this one specifically where i wasn't quite as close 
and I found that the bottom bomber will tend to jump into the Meg Circle anyway. Now that we're done with Tartars, let's move on to Asphodel. Asphodel has two, technically three mini-bosses you can potentially get if you include the barge, which is considered a mini-boss room. Unfortunately, there's not much to cover when it comes to Barge of Death. All you can really do is try to clear it as fast as possible. There's no secret time save that everyone knows about that you don't. A lot of people just give up if it's an any heat run and get sad if it's an RTA run. And again, trying to follow order of difficulty, we'll be starting with the Power Couple slash Mega Gorgon and Skull Crusher. So what you're going to want to do for the Meg on the Power Couple, you're going to dash up and hug the Mega Gorgon, doing your best to break her armor. Now while you're doing this, the Skull Crusher will fly up and get ready to land on you. You want to stay hugging the Mega Gorgon, so that way when the Skull Crusher comes down and lands on you, and you summon Meg, you'll hopefully be able to kill the Mega Gorgon, as well as break the Skull Crusher's armor and clean him up soon after. Now for the Witches. As soon as you enter the room, you're going to want to dash to the middle island while the witches are spawning. Once you see the witch in the middle start to go vertically up, you're going to want to tap up on either the D-pad or W on the keyboard and then hit your summon button. Now it's important to make sure that you do not turn until you see the Meg aiming circle show up and hit the top three witches. If you do turn early, your summon will tend to go more vertical as opposed to horizontal, which is what we want and it'll mess up the Meg. This Meg can look and sometimes feel difficult when you're first learning it, but once you get used to it, it's honestly not so bad. And that was Asphodel, and on to Elysium. Elysium has too many bosses, and then a Meg you want to use on the actual boss themselves as well. And we'll once again be going in order of difficulty, in my opinion, starting with the Soul Catcher or the Butterfly Ball. The Meg on the Butterfly Ball is incredibly straightforward. All you have to do is either dash on top of or in front of the Butterfly Ball and then Meg as soon as it's done spawning and it'll hit it right away. The Asterius Mini Boss Meg is a fairly simple one, but takes a little bit of time and learning to get the timings down. All you want to do is go through the fight as normal at the beginning up until you start to enter the next phase when he throws on a shield. Upon throwing on his shield, he will raise his axe and then pound his chest twice. After you see him pound his chest the second time and his arm starts to go down while hugging him, you just want to summon Meg and it should hit him as soon as his shield drops. A small weird thing that can happen with Asterius sometimes as he's phasing is he can just not pound his chest at all and he'll just immediately go into the next phase of the fight. If that happens, you kind of have to be on your toes and ready to Meg, or you can just skip the Meg and continue the fight as normal if you miss the timing. And don't feel bad if it does happen to you and you don't get the timing out. It's happened to all of us multiple times, and it's just one of those things that can sometimes happen. Another way to go about Megging on Asterius is to Meg as soon as the dialogue is done and the fight actually starts. There's pros and cons to either the previous timing as well as this one. Pros for this one would be you get even length phases for the first two segments of the fight as Meg takes a big chunk off of him, and then a pro towards the timing where you do it when after he's done phasing is it just makes the final uh, segment really, really fast. Last up in Elysium will be the Heroes Fight Meg. Now, this Meg is fairly straightforward to do, but there is a small thing that you should be conscious of. All you have to do in order to do the Meg is tap up on the D-pad and summon as soon as the dialogue stops and you end up in the fight. It'll throw the Meg circle horizontally and hit both heroes. A quick note though is we've noticed that sometimes hitting Theseus before the Meg hits him can cause him to block the Meg when he otherwise wouldn't. So just be mindful of that as you're going into the fight and try to wait until you're sure the Meg has already hit him before you start going all out on both heroes. Now that we're done with Elysium, last but certainly not least will be Styx. Styx has a total of five potential mini bosses, including Tiny Vermin, unfortunately. As a quick note, you may choose to hold your mix as you're entering Styx in order to ensure that you have one as you go into the Hades fight. And to start off Styx, we're gonna go with a really quick two for one since the Satyr and the Father mini bosses both have very similar timings. All you have to do is, while they're coming down from the ceiling, just stand about where they'll be landing and then summon and they should land directly into the Meg and get hit. 
as a quick thing to be conscious of, if you have something like Splash Dash or anything else that may push them back, it's very easy to push them out of the Meg, so just be mindful of that. Next Toad Meg is also a fairly simple Meg. All you really need to do is dash on top of them and wait until you see the snake stone sort of glow a little bit. This is your cue on when to meg. After he glows, he becomes vulnerable and then you can just kill him quick and easy. Now for the giant rat. The giant rat meg is fairly straightforward, but requires just a little bit of knowledge on how lining up meg works. What you're going to want to do if you picture the arena that he spawns in as a diamond is stand in either the top or the bottom corner and face either to the left or to the right. This way, as he's unburrowing and you summon, you'll place the Meg Summon vertically across any of the directions he could potentially dash in, and as long as you're careful not to push him out with any knockback effects, it'll hit him every time. Now for everyone's most hated mini boss in the entire game, I'd say. Tiny Vermin. The Meg for Tiny Vermin is inconsistent, it's terrible, everyone hates it and everyone hates him because he's slow and he wastes time. Fuck Tiny Vermin, all my homies hate Tiny Vermin. There are two general schools of thought on when to meg on Tiny Vermin. There is a more YOLO meg, which I frequently go for and am frequently punished for, where after he burrows, as he begins to unburrow, you hit the summon button while standing near where he's unburrowing to hopefully have him unburrow immediately into the meg. There's a safer meg, which is when he's yelling, and you can tell he's yelling because of the sharp purple and red spikes that are coming out of his model. But the problem with that is it's inconsistent on if he'll yell or not, and so you just kind of have to either hope that he yells or go for the yellow meg. And last but certainly not least will be the dad meg. Now there are two schools of thought on when to meg on dad. There's pros and cons to both. You can either meg him in phase one by just smashing the summon button as soon as you go in and are mashing through the dialogue, or there's a phase two meg. Pros to the phase 1 meg would be that it helps speed up phase 1, which is really, really important, as that's the only phase he can use his stealth in. Benefit to the meg in phase 2, the main one is a bit of safety from the ring that comes out as summoning gets rid of the ring and helping speed up the first half, but that's about it. I personally tend to only really meg on phase 1 at this point. So that's it. That's the meg guide. We finally come to the end. This is something that every speedrunner at some point has wanted to make, but no one has really had the time to get around to making it until now. So, uh, yeah, here we are. This is the part where I give shoutouts to everyone that helped along the way. So, huge shoutouts to Fabulization, Element OP, Museus, Webs, Dunko, Risk13, as well as Vareem. Uh, you can find links to all of them down in the description. And of course this video would be absolutely nothing but a bunch of files on my computer if it wasn't for Ghost, the editor of this video. Fantastic person, great at editing, absolutely love him. You can find all his links in the description as well. And then one last shout out I wanted to give is just to the Haiti speedrunning community as a whole. Everyone's fantastic and if you're interested in getting into it, there is a speedrunning discord. The link to that will also be in the description. Feel free to ask any questions, everyone is super super helpful and uh, more than happy to help. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see y'all next time.